kind of talked about it, around it, but I'm going to tell you the process. So, and we'll, we'll hopefully show it. But the idea is you basically kind of talk in a group. And the whole, we'll, we'll do it over here. And then we'll give everybody a sticky note and a Sharpie. And the idea is we're trying to get you to brainstorm, write one idea at a time on each one so that we can group them and so on and so forth. But what we'll do is we'll put them all on the board the first time. We'll have somebody help facilitate it, which probably be myself. And then what we'll do is we'll start to group and categorize. We want to focus, in this case, on both quantity and quality when we do the grouping. And we'll look for patterns. And, we will, and then we're going to apply something called group voting. What we're going to do is we're going to create a POV, which is a point of view statement, and create a composite sketch. So what's a composite sketch? I think we talked a little bit about user testing, but the idea is that we want to have that golden thread. We want to have that perfect user that is going to be delighted by what we do. Unfortunately, sometimes when, we have, when we have, we're looking for that, that person in the real world does not exist, or we don't have access to that particular person. But what we can do is sometimes take the feedback of all the people we have for it, kind of meld them together, figure out which ones we want to keep, attributes we want to keep, which ones aren't useful to us, and then we put them together, and we make up this pseudo person. It helps to do things like give them a name, age, all those other things. Because what happens is you want to basically give enough detail that later on in the project, when you're developing, or, or somebody's trying to create a feature and say, do you remember Bob doesn't like this? Or Bob, like the idea is that when you say Bob, if that's a composite sketch's name, that it evokes a picture of an image of somebody. And even in our groups, we've done sometimes where we'll take a magazine picture and we'll just rip it out and then we'll call him. Like we call one guy Gerd that was doing a, a, a corporate document uh, application. What happens is it ends up being easier to communicate than 40 year old stay at home mom that has three kids that Julie likes this. You get used to that kind of action. It's actually is quite useful. Even, even if you're not doing design, I think I, I encourage you to kind of use composite sketches. But you get, you get team buy-in. So I wouldn't necessarily say in design thinking everything is a democracy, but I hope to think that you guys would have consensus, okay? group consensus. Okay? But the idea is that you want buy-in. Because initially, when you build a product afterwards, you are, are only going to focus on the target user. Now, I, initially when I present this, you almost always have pushback on that kind of topic. And I'm going to kind of just stay on that one point and expand that a little bit. People kind of say, OK, if you're so narrow and type that you're so focused, you're going to provide a product that has very little, um, that the target is so small, how can you generate the revenue to justify the application of the product and so on and so forth? You are so tightly knit and focused. We deal with that problem because how in the second part when we're actually doing the design and the build and we figure out the viability and stuff like that. But at the beginning, we need to have that level of understanding and depth because we want to have that radical level of, of design, that high level of delight. And then what we'll do is we'll build it out that there might be people who are near that person, but they'll be still delighted. And eventually what we'll do is we'll, we'll build a bell curve, right? And there's some threshold that our application meet, and hopefully enough of that bell curve will be above water. But the idea is that you don't design for the average, which is something that's quite different paradigm in design thinking from before. Because before, you know, we have all these statistics. You know, like if you go into a shoe store, you know, size it goes from size eight to size twelve. Like, or, you know, we know all these norms and stuff like that on the bell curve distribution, and we kind of the user kind of designs for like an average maybe not size nine foot or something like that. Design thinking is not about that. Design thinking is about finding extreme users, finding that one composite sketch, putting all your effort into biting that golden thread for that one user. And then what we want to do is then have that delight there. And then what we'll do is we'll expand. Because that's how you get the radical ideas. The him ha hing average user, you're always going to get the, well, not always going to get. Sometimes you get the average product. We're hoping to get the extremely good product through design thinking. We, what we want to do then is sort of create a point of view statement. And this is the part that other things, other mechanisms will seem similar to design thinking. These are the parts that are very specific to design thinking. Some people probably have some like slight twists on that. Even SAP, we have some slight twists on that. But I'm giving you the sort of the D school version of it, the Stanford D school. What we want to do is we want to isolate a point of view statement. And the point of view statement can be done in a couple different methods I'm going to show you. The first one is sort of the Mad Lib. You guys use Mad Libs, kind of full, fill in the words here type of thing. So we're going to fill in user needs insight. So if, 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 if it were to be, it would be something like user needs, user needs because surprising insight. So an example of that, 
obviously it's like a mad lib it doesn't sound cool to add stuff into it right so mm -hmm. semi pro drummer needs portable silent drum kit so he can practice while traveling on business to keep his skills up <laughs> typically what we might have done is say hey let's build a let's build the next cool drum kit what does that mean okay fine let's build the next silent silent drum kit electronic drum kit or what do you want to call it right um, or portable drum kit, right? Like, and then you, they'll go away and say, okay, how do I make a, a, a normal size drum kit portable, right? Or how do I make it lighter? We're not into that. We're into finding the designer, the designers are having the user focus first, laser focused first. So let's say, we already know lots of, there's lots of information if you actually mind these type of statements, like it's a semi-pro drummer, because the user, because we already knew specifically, you know, it's not a pro, it's not meant to go on a stage or something like that. It's not meant to go on the road and you know have to kind of get killed or something like that in the back of a truck or dropped by a roadie. You know, we, we say things like you know portable and silent. You know, why does he need that? He wants to keep up his skills. He's not recording, or so the the really thing is him being able to practice as opposed to say him recording an album or something like that. So we surprisingly mine a lot of information from these kind of statements. Another one is the uh, sorry. <laughs> Probably can't read that font from that far, but the other is the want ads. So I said here, it's kind of like Craigslist or KGG, right? So the idea is like, kind of want to have that wanted ad that says, you know, this is what I want. These are my conditions or, or information about it. So I'll read you what I have here, right? Uh, this is real. I don't know if it's valid anymore because it probably expired, but this is a real wanted ad from Craigslist, right? So, Drummer wanted, any level, new market, two guitarists seeking drummer on with small portable kit for ambient space, rock jamming songs, writing songs with compilation. We're both in our 40s, pretty easy going, intermediate level players, hoping for a session per week in the modest, in a moderate volume house <laughs> rehearsal setting in the new market area, right? Any skills and expertise levels, but mo must be comfortable with jamming and, and into part, being part of a uh, ground up creative process. Right? Kind of cool, right? But the idea is here is like, I quickly know what they want, I quickly know who they are, and I quickly know what the conditions are. So kind of like, once again, user needs specific insight, right? These guys are talking about moderate volume house, <laughs> house rehearsal, <laughs> home rehearsal, right? What we do then, we take those things, and once we get a how might uh, what point of view, a POV, uh, we generate how might we statements. And then what we do is, in here, what we do is we say, User need insight, so it can be phrase, name, one of those things. And then what we do is we, we create the how might we statement. So like, how do we create a, how do we create or produce a lighter weight drum stand? How do we create a, a portable folding drum kit? How do, how do we create a quick setup drum kit? How do we reduce the volume for, you know, a drum kit, something like that? You get all these kind of things down. We create the table like this. And what we do is when we have like, could any number of these things, about eight or 10. And then what we do is we start circling the ones we want to build. And then we take those and we start for it and we start to move to the next like the idea, idea or the design phase, stuff like that. What we'll do now is we'll take a quick break and then we'll come back. Hopefully we can get the chairs more of a U type of shape so everybody type of face each other.